All right, students, your mug has a handle. It's been sanded. It is buttery smooth, not only on the outside, but underneath the handle, inside it's smooth all the way to the bottom. Now, now you are ready to do the next step. If you need to do any sanding, this is the last chance to do it. So really make sure that it's smooth. In fact, I want to check all of your mugs. I want to feel them all and tell you if there's any place else to smooth before you glaze. So before you glaze, bring me your mug. Let me feel it. Let me feel the inside, the outside. Let me really check it out to make sure there's nothing that you need to sand. And then once you're done with that and you have sanded it, then we're going to be talking about these things called the glaze. So um, let's just talk about that so that when you get to this, you'll be ready for it. So you'll need a glaze mat. You'll come over here. You'll get one. Um, doesn't matter which one. Just pick it up. Take it to your spot like so. And lay it down. I'll put your chairs underneath where you're sitting there. So let me set that up. I'm going to get my mug, put it on my mat. Perfect. Then I need to do something. And it's not with these bottles yet. It's with the sponge. Uh, what I'm going to do is take a sponge, just any sponge. This sponge will work. I'm going to take it over to the sink because I want a clean sponge. I'm going to turn on a faucet like so. Rinse it out. Bring it out. Rinse it out, wring it out to make sure it's clean. And I want to rinse this out really well so it's not dripping water. So I'm going to take this sponge back to my glaze mat. And then I am going to dust it off. And you can see it's a different color. It's darker. And I'm going to dust underneath. I'm going to dust everywhere that I'm going to put glaze. That includes inside. So I've dusted off a little bit on this side. This side might be not as dry, so I'm gonna switch it around or it's starting to dry out. And I'll do the other sides. And I'll keep doing this and I'm just trying to get all the dust off where I'm going to glaze. If you have little indentions in here, really push in there to help make sure that all those little cracks and nooks are able to get glaze in there, okay? So take your time and really make sure to get everywhere. Cause if you miss any spot and there's dust on it, glaze won't stick there. So I've used up a little bit of this. It's now a little bit too dry. So I'll bring it back over to the sink, turn on the water, rinse it out really quickly, bring it out so it's not dripping. The reason why we're not having it soaking wet because we want our mug to dry faster. We don't want to spend all day trying to wait for it to dry. So I'm gonna go inside here all the way to the bottom. So really get down there. This is why we're sanding at the bottom as well. Get all the sides, go everywhere in between, around. Just get everywhere that you're gonna put glaze, okay? Everywhere, all the way around. And any cracks, nooks, get everywhere in there. Just everywhere you can. All the way to the bottom, you can use tools if you need to. All right, and then we're gonna let that dry. Well, I'm drying that. I'm going to put, bring this over here and I'll rinse this out, wring it out, wring it out completely. One mom said that she thought that I deserved a million dollars just for teaching her kid how to wring out a sponge. If you leave sponges wet, they get all moldy and gross and nasty. Uh, so wring them out and then we can put them back. She said that it was the most important thing her child could have learned in the art room because she gets annoyed that her child doesn't uh, wring out the sponges. So this thing has to dry. We can see it's still different colors. Um, it's not fully dry yet. So I'm gonna let it sit here for a little bit. I'm gonna clean stuff, prep things for my next step uh, while well, this thing is drying. All right, it's been about four minutes. It's starting to dry out. It's a little cold to the touch. I can see some dark areas still, like right here is dark compared to that light area. So I'm just gonna let it dry, I'll be back. All right, students, another three minutes. It's getting there, it's getting there. There's still some wet spots. This is why we don't want our sponge to be sopping wet, but it still needs to be moist enough to get the dust off of here. So I'm gonna let it dry some more and I'll come back. All right, students, it has been a total about 16 minutes now. 
Um, I've been able to get some grading done and prep in some clay in the meanwhile. But now this thing is completely dry. It feels the same temperature. There's not any cold spots on it. It feels smooth. It doesn't feel dusty. So I know it's time to glaze. So I am going to go over here and I'm going to look at what color do I want? Do I want Lagoon? Do I want Seafoam? Do I want Granny Smith? Do I want Sherbert, Blush, or Lilac? Those are the colors that respond to the bottles that are in that row. So this is what your mug could look like at the end of it. Um, we have some limited colors like Lagoon. There's only two and there's some Sherbert that is also a limited color, but we have plenty of the others, okay? So when you come over here, you're gonna pick the color that you like the best. And when we're thinking about our mug, we are going to start from the inside and work out. So what do I want the color of the inside of my mug to look? I'm just gonna pick Granny Smith and I'm gonna pick this one. I'll bring it over to my table and I can only use one color at a time. So I'm only gonna bring one color over here at a time. Then I'm going to go over here and find a brush. Am I painting really small details? Am I painting some medium stuff or do I need a big brush? I am painting the inside of mine all one color. So I'm just going to grab a big brush. This one has not been clean. You can see it's kind of stiff. It's a little bit harder to use. So I'm just going to dip it in here, swirl it around. And then I'm going to get a paper towel like so. And then, oops, ripping off weird paper towels. Okay, get the paper towel like so, and I'm going to pinch, put it inside, and pinch and pull, pinch and pull, pinch and pull. This is how we're going to clean our brushes every time we use it, whether we're painting or uh, watercoloring or doing ceramic. So we're just putting it inside the paintbrush, we're going to pinch down and pull. And then that makes a nice clean paintbrush that's very bendable. Look how nice that is now. That uh, is a clean paintbrush. So we're gonna bring this clean paintbrush back to our spots with our glaze, and we're gonna get a paper towel. If you need more paper towel, just go get some more paper towel. Now, our first thing is, we're not going to jump right into this because we need to prepare the glaze. So when we think about the glaze, remember that the glaze has glass in it, ground up glass at the bottom of it right here. And then it has slip in it, that's that clay water mixture. And then it has pigment up here. And so we need to get the pigment to go to the bottom and we need the gl glass to come to the top. Now some students wanna shake it up really bad, but that adds air bubbles in here. And we don't want air bubbles because air bubbles are gonna make the glaze not stick to our mug and then it doesn't make it food safe. So we're gonna open up the cap slowly and we're gonna set down. Then we're gonna take our paintbrush and put it so the handle, that's right, the handle touches the bottom, the very bottom of the bottle. And then what we're gonna do is stir slowly for about a minute, just stir slowly. And the reason why we're stirring slowly is so that we don't make any air bubbles. And I might stir one way and I might stir another way to help mix it up. So let me just stir slowly for a little bit. All right, there it is. Now that we have this uh, glaze all dripping down our handle, what we're gonna do is take some paper towel and we're just gonna wipe it back into the bottle. So I'm pushing down and all of that's gonna go back into the bottle. And if I need to, I'll just turn it and then do another part. And now my handle is clean on my brush. If I wanna dry it off one last time, perfect. Now, uh, you might have just seen, I made a drop of glaze on the table. All I had to do was take the paper towel, clean it up. It's easier to clean it up now before it dries, okay? So then what I'm going to do is take my brush and dip it into the glaze, and I'm going to make sure that I leave some part of the hair of the brush. I do not want glaze up here on the metal part. I need to see some of the hair of the brush. So it goes paint, hair of the brush, then the metal part. That allows that paint not to get in the metal area because that's what holds onto your brush and it makes you lose hairs in your brush later. So if you can always have just paint at the tip, some hair, and then the metal part, you'll be fine. Then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna start at the bottom of my mug. I'm gonna to try to cover it all and I'm gonna do one coat and I might have to dab to get into some rough corners and I'll go back in and I'll get some more. You can see I have some hair there 
If I'm dripping any, I can just let it off onto the side. And then I'm gonna start pulling it up into our mug. And I will paint the whole inside of my mug. And it's easier to paint just the inside one color so that you don't have to try to dry it. Um, here's the thing though, you're gonna have to do three layers of the inside to make sure that's food safe. So I'm going to do one layer all the way around and I'm gonna let it dry. You probably need like three or four minutes, maybe even longer. Sorry, probably like seven minutes for it to dry. So I'm gonna paint it up and then I will let it dry, okay? So I'm just going in and around, trying to get everything and then I need to let it dry all the way. Here's the thing with glaze. Um, it needs one layer to seal things. It needs another layer, especially on food things, to seal the things you missed. And then it needs another layer on top of that to seal everything else. So you need three different layers, but the layers cannot be put on wet. So if you put one layer on wet, you have to let it dry. And then you can put the next layer once it's completely dry. If you don't do it, it just melts into the first layer and then that just becomes one layer. So you need to let it dry for like seven minutes, then go back, paint it again, and then put the next coat on and then put the next one. Students have found it helpful to put like a list of colors because you might want to paint the out inside one color, let it dry, and then put the lid back on it while you're letting that dry. And then you could go over here, put this back and be like, oh, well, I want blush on the outside. So you can get blush and then you can go clean out your brush because we don't have enough for everybody to have, right? Oh, that's dirty I don't even want to take it over there yet because remember what we're gonna do is pinch and pull pinch and pull pinch and pull and this is gonna get most of the pigment you can see that out of the brush just by pinching and pulling so once that's done that makes it easier to just come over here quickly to the sink rinse it out real quick and most of the color is already out of your brush um, because you pinched and pulled it earlier and now it's just pinching and pulling it dry and then reshaping it and then putting it back in there. So if you're going to do a different color, you can come and grab a different brush, maybe a big one, a small one, or a medium one or a small one. And then you can go back. Uh, I'm going to I like to find clean brushes because those are the easiest to paint with. But if there's a dirty one, I'll just get a dirty one, put it in the bucket, swoosh it around. Oh, hey, look at that. Pinch and pull, pinch and pull, pinch and pull, pinch and pull, and it's clean. It's clean. So now I can take this back to my spot. I'm going to have to stir this one up, right? Because every one I want to make sure, and I can't trust that someone else stirred it up, right? So brush to the bottom, stirring for a minute. Wipe it off. Wipe it off, wipe it off. And then you can paint the outside while you're waiting for the inside to dry. So I don't have an, all the colors over here. I don't have all the paint brushes. I can make a line. Here's something that will happen. Hairs will get in there. We don't want hairs in there because if we they burn and they stay in there, then you're going, well, they'll stay under the glaze. And so we need to wipe those away. If that's happening to you a lot while you're glazing, just know you probably got some hair or someone used some glaze all the way up to the metal part and now those hairs are starting to come out. And you can see that a lot in this one. All those hairs are gonna be in the cup and nobody was going to want a cup with hairs in it like that, okay? So if you do get a hair, just sort of wipe them out. Wipe them out, wipe them out, wipe them out. And then what you can do, and I prefer doing this with my brushes, is just take a paper towel, like so, and then just sort of pulling out those hairs ahead of time. So then you shouldn't get any hairs when you paint next time. So if I was doing like, let's say a candy stripe around here, I might do one like over here. Now there's no hairs in there that I can see. Oh, there's a little one. I'll get that in a bit and then I can continue. Um, these will need three coats as well. 
So I'll let those dry and maybe I'll have a list to mark which ones I'm doing. Um, you can erase slip, you can erase glaze. So let me show you how to erase glaze. Let's say you made a mistake. You're like, no, 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 I don't want candy stripes on the outside. And so what you do is you get a paper towel like so, come over here like so, just get a little wet, wring it out. And then you're gonna come back to your mug like so, and you can see that, and I don't want that air anymore, so I'm just going to scrub it away. Little circles help to get it off faster. And if I need to, I'll get some more water on a wet paper towel and I can take it away. Just know now I have to let it dry before I put paper or put something else on it, okay? So let's see this. It is dried in there. It's no longer shiny, but you can see I've missed some spots where there's cracks. There are some areas down in there that don't look right there that doesn't look like it got glazed at all. That's why we're gonna do a second coat. I need to do all the cracks down there around the edge of it. You can sort of see those dark areas. You can see it's shiny at the bottom. That means it's not dry down there yet. So I'll give it some more time uh, and I'll wait for it to, to do the next coat. Well, I'm waiting, I can take my blush back Put it back where it goes. There's blush, there's a circle, boom. Now the next person can find it. I can take my paintbrush back, tip it. I could put it in the other one too. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just some water because I've already pinched and pulled it, the pigment out of it. So this is just helping me reshape it. And I can give it a little twist at the top. So now people are like, ooh, that looks like a good paintbrush. I want to use it. And then I'll put it back. Is it small? No. Is it large? No. Is it medium? So that goes back there. And then you can come back and paint your mug if you need to. Remember, you need three coats on the inside. You need to have three coats on the outside, but you cannot have any glaze at the bottom. So if you see glaze like this on the bottom of your mug, you're gonna take a wet paper towel and scrub it off. Scrub it off completely. You can see I got a bit of glaze on there because my glaze mat had some glaze on there. And so I need to scrub all this off so that it does not get any glaze on there so it doesn't adhere to the shelf. Also, you don't want to, you want a pinky's width all the way around the bottom that doesn't have any glaze. So what I tell students is paint all the way to the bottom, then take a paper towel and wipe around the edge so that you get a nice crisp line that goes all the way around so that nothing will stick to the shelf. So three layers on the inside, make sure it's fully dry before you next put layer on, and then do the outside, the handle underneath. Once you're all done, you're gonna make sure that everything gets put back. All of these brushes are with the tips up. If you put the tips down, it starts flattening them out and they get all bent and they're gross and nobody wants to use them. Put them back in the right container. Make sure they're clean. If they're dirty like this, this isn't gonna help anybody. You can wash them out. You can dry them off by pinching and pulling, and then you can put them back in. Make sure that the glaze is back where it goes. The name matches the name, matches the color. It's all here for you. Make sure that you're wet sponging your sponges and then putting them back here. Make sure they're clean. Make sure the glaze mat's here. Make sure that the sandpaper is here. Um, this is not for your garbage. If you see sandpaper like this, where it's more paper than sand, throw it away. You can come over here and be like, goodbye sandpaper. And then you can go and find a fresher piece if they are really beat up. Like this has some good sandpaper still on it. Um, but some of these can just go away. Uh, they just don't have any grit. Like this one's pretty garbage. Um, this one looks kind of toast. So if that's the case, just bring them over here, throw them away. Then when you are done, you are going to put your projects, right? You're gonna put your projects in your Biba and you can walk them back. You can carry them, your bucket up, and then you're just gonna put them wherever they are in your bee bin so that you can work on it the next day, okay? And then you'll come over here. You will get your garbage like so, pick it up, ta-da. Not only am I picking this up, I'm gonna pick the mat up, I'll carry it. I will put the mat back neatly. This was one I was sanding on, this is one I'm glazing. So that goes over here next to the sandpaper. 
take this, put it into the garbage can, and then I'm gonna spray down my table and dry it like I always do, and then work on cleaning up this floor so we do not have footprints everywhere.